Kate from Team Super Awesome Art, and today I want to do a video that is very long overdue, and it is how we make our custom Funko Pops. It's kind of hard to explain because there are quite a few steps in our process, so I thought a video would be the easiest way to show everybody how it's done. Okay, so another thing to remember is none of this is set in stone. This is just what works for us. You definitely can do as much of this video as you'd like, or as little as you like or none of it at all, and come up with your own ideas. Okay, first off, the first thing you want to do is come up with a very clear idea for your custom. This will save you a lot of time in the process if you know exactly what you want from your custom. So uh, what this means is figure out what um, character you'd like to do. Um, look at a lot of images and really know front, side, back what the character looks like. So that way it, um, it'll save you a lot of time in the process if you miss something to have to go back and fix it. So it's really important to really have a clear idea of your character and of your custom. The second step is picking a vinyl figure for your custom. There are two ways of doing this. One, you can get a DIY pop and this is a pop that comes blank. Funko sells it. They sell it in male and female versions and it comes white and ready to paint or sculpt on whatever you want to do to it. So you can do that or you can get an already existing figure and you can work on that. So what that means is let's say you have your idea, uh, you already know what you want your character to look like and let's say it is uh, Red Hulk. So instead of buying a DIY pop and trying to turn that into the Hulk or sculpt on that it, to turn him into the Hulk and then start painting on him. It'd be way easier to just buy a Hulk pop that already looks like the Hulk and just go ahead and paint that um, red and it'll save you the step of actually uh, sculpting on the vinyl. So that's a very time-saving way to do this. Once you've decided what figure you want to use, uh, you might want to take the head off of your vinyl. The reason you do this is because it makes it a lot easier to work on the body without the head on top. Also, when you go to bake your figure, having such a top heavy figure, it might sink your vinyl a little bit with the heat. So it's always safer to just separate the two before you bake, um, bake him. To take the head off, I already made a video, so I'm gonna post that here, and you can just click on the link if you'd like to know how to do that. Once you decided what figure you'd like to make and which vinyl, you'd like to make him on, you then have to decide if you're going to sculpt on him. I'm doing this figure and it's going to be 007. I used this pop and this pop to make a 007 character. So what I did was I used the body on this figure and the head on this figure, this head doesn't come off, but the head on this figure and the body on this figure to make the 007 pop. So. To this figure, I had to change the hair, and this is what I did to change the hair. So I just added a little bit of clay at the top. To do that, you're going to want to use, I recommend Super Sculpey clay. The reason I recommend Super Sculpey is because it's the easiest to work with if you've never um, put clay on a vinyl. So it comes in a bar, or brick, as they call it, like this and it says Super Sculpey and it comes in the beige color. Um, and then inside it kind of looks like that. And then all you want to do is you're just going to take a piece and you're going to soften it in your hands till so it's nice and soft and it's not crumbly anymore. So it's kind of like a gummy consistency. So once it's a kind of a gummy consistency, you're going to take your pop and you're just going to start sculpting where you want your um, clay to be. The reason I recommend this clay if you've never sculpted before is because it's not super expensive. You get a lot of it and it'll last you quite a few pops. It's easy to work with and it sticks to the vinyl. So that's kind of important. If you've never done it before, it's kind of tricky when the clay does not want to hold on to the vinyl. So this, this clay, I feel like it's the easiest um, once you've tried this clay, um, you can order different brands and from there you can kind of figure out which one you love to work with. Super Sculpey Beige, there is a little seahorse on the box and it says Super Sculpey and it comes in the color beige. 
If you guys do not want to bake your figure, put, literally put your vinyl in the oven, I know it's scary, but you do want to do some sculpting, you can always sculpt some accessories and bake them separately and then add them to your vinyl. So um, I did that with my Gamer Pop. I baked the little uh, controllers separately and then I added them to the vinyl afterwards. So if you guys are afraid of actually baking your vinyl, you can always just bake separately and then add on later. Once you have your figure sculpted the way you want it, you're going to want to bake your figure. So I recommend following the instructions on the back of the clay uh, box and really watch your vinyl if you've never done this before. All ovens bake at different temperatures, so it's really important to really watch your vinyl, make sure it's keeping its form. Um, if it is too hot, you might want to lower the temperature and raise the time of how long your vinyl is in there. Once your vinyls come out of the oven, they are going to be nice and hard, like so. The next step is probably the most important step into getting a really nice, clean vinyl figure. That means any little imperfection that your vinyl may have, you're going to want to sand that down. Okay, so to do this, you're going to have a sandpaper and lots of it. You're going to want to have different grades of sandpaper um, depending on how rough your vinyl is. I use 150 a lot because I try and smooth out my vinyl as much as possible before I bake it so I don't have to sand as much because I hate sanding. Uh, if you're like me, you try and pawn off the sanding to somebody else, uh, but sometimes you just have to do it. All you have to do is grab your vinyl and just start sanding at all the little imperfections that your vinyl might have just around the edges or wherever there's a clay that's just sticking up that should be there, you can go ahead and sand that down. The next step we do is we prime our figures. The reason we prime our figures is because this way the, we make sure that the paint that we put on will stick to the vinyl. Oh, especially when you're working on just vinyl, the, it's very slippery, it's very sleek. So if you're just putting a, a water-based acrylic paint onto your vinyl, it might not stick. So this makes this priming your figure uh, assures that the paint will stick onto the vinyl. So for this step, what we do is we uh, tape the head on the vinyl. We sometimes do this. The reason we do this is because when you go to put the head on, sometimes that thin layer of primer is too much and the head won't go back on. I say sometimes because I have here some that we didn't tape off. So you can skip this if you want to or do it. Um, okay, so once your figure is uh, baked and hard, you're going to come out to a well-ventilated area. Uh, generally, we open up the garage. It is nighttime, so we're just going to show you really quickly how, you, how we do this in a not-so-well-ventilated area. But definitely, I do recommend you do this in a very well-ventilated area, especially if you're going to do a lot of figures um, at once. The, what we have out here is we just kind of set up a piece of cardboard on a table so when we do spray them, it doesn't go everywhere. To prime, we use an automobile primer. Uh, it's Rust-Oleum uh, primer, and the reason we use this is because we've tried other primers in the past, and I don't know if it's because we live in a very humid area, uh, our toys would stay sticky. With this, we find that it does eliminate that little issue, and on top of that, this is a primer that you can uh, wet sand, so you can sand after it's primed and that's really cool that's really cool because uh, it really does give you a really really smooth surface to paint on so that's why we use this all right guys a couple quick tips on doing this once you've done the first layer on one half of your vinyl you're going to sit there you're going to wait and let it sit there for quite a while. You're not going to want to touch it. You're not going to want to pick it up. You're not going to want to check on it. Just let it be for a couple hours. Then once that is done, you're going to grab them, flip them over, and do the other side. Another really quick uh, tip is make sure you shake your primer very, very well before you prime. The reason is because it will come out super watery and it will leave your vinyl extremely sticky. Um, in that case, it goes, you're going to have to strip the primer off the 
figure and it just gets super hairy. So uh, the best advice I can give you in all of this is don't rush any steps because it does get extremely messy if things go wrong. So make sure you shake your primer really, really well, spray it on, leave it there for a couple hours, then go ahead, flip it over, and do the other side. Once your vinyl is primed, you are going to want to sand him again. Uh, the reason you do this again is because once you put primer on, a lot of little imperfections might show up that you didn't see before. Um, so this is a good time to get in there and really get rid of those two. You're going to go ahead and take some more sandpaper. At this point you might want to use uh, uh, the finest uh, grade you can get because there really isn't going to be a lot of little imperfections, but if there are some you want to take those down. So you can see kind of there on the chest that there are little, little pieces sticking out that shouldn't be there. So we can go ahead and take those off with some more sandpaper. Once that is done, you are going to go prime again. Now that you have taken off all the little imperfections and you'll find that you might have hit the um, clay again, you want to go ahead and prime for the last time. At this point, once you've already primed your last time, you might want to go in there with a super um, soft sponge like this and kind of buff at your uh, uh, vinyl so it's really really nice and smooth. To this you can also use a wet sanding technique in order to get it really really smooth. Once your vinyl is all primed it is now ready for paint. There are two techniques to painting. One of them is airbrushing and the other is just uh, paint brushing your vinyl. So for your first vinyl paint brushing works just fine and if you are starting out this is your first vinyl there is no real need to really invest in an airbrush before really knowing if uh, making vinyls is something you love to do. The paints that we use to paint on our vinyls are the Liquid Tex uh, acrylic paint and these little bottles are professional acrylic art color and they are soft body. These might be a little harder to come by, you might have to order them, so if you're working on your first uh, vinyl you really don't have to get these. I also like the Folk Art brand and they come in little uh, containers like this and you can get them almost anywhere, any craft store, uh, our Walmarts carry them. So these might be a way to go if you're just uh, really just starting out and trying, wanting to try it. Uh, they're not very expensive, they're about between a dollar and maybe three dollars. Um, so they're fairly inexpensive and they do last you a really, really long time. Another brand that is also good, I've tried before, is the Apple Barrel paint. I haven't really used a lot of it, but it does work and you can find that anywhere. So if you really just want to try and you have that paint, or you find a store that has that paint, you can definitely give that one a shot. The last step you're going to want to take in finishing your vinyl is to seal your artwork. So once you have a fully finished vinyl and you have everything the way you want it to look, you're going to seal your figure. And the reason you do this is to protect the artwork so that if something splashes on it or if something hits it, it won't chip the paint. So this is really the most important step, I believe, because it just holds everything in place. For this step, I like to use this Americana brand and it comes in a gloss version or a satin version or a matte version and that is total preference on which one you would like to use. The reason I like to use a brush on uh, sealant is because I could do it here at the table. I don't have to go outside to do this step um, versus a spray on sealant. And it is um, spray on sealants, to be honest, if the weather's a little humid, it might take a little while to dry. So that's something to think about. But also with this one, you, have, you do have to remember that um, brushing it on, you have to be very careful to make sure that you have really nice even strokes so you get a really nice even seal. Um, if you do not want to use a brush on sealant, you can definitely use a spray on sealant. A good one to use, I've used it before, is the Krylon uh, sealant and it comes in a spray can and you go outside and you spray it on just like you do your primer. So that works too, although I do use this, not gonna lie, I do like to brush on my sealant. It is a little tricky though, it does take practice, so keep that in mind. 
Alright guys, I think that's everything from start to finish. This is just a little uh, overview of our process on how to do this. The way we learned how to do this is, to be honest with you, we just watched a YouTube about a YouTube video about maybe three years ago on how to make custom vinyls. Uh, this also, guys, it works on any vinyl figure. You don't have to just use it on pops. The, the way we did learn is we just watched a video on how to make custom vinyl figures and we've really adapted a lot of this since then to kind of what we like to use. So it has changed quite a bit, but um, I think making custom vinyls, it is a personal thing, your personal preference on paint, on primer, on sealant, but at least this gives you a really good start on maybe what to look for and maybe the steps and which one comes first. If this is your first custom, please comment below and I will try to I'm going to try really hard to get to your questions as quickly as possible. Um, if you guys have, if, if some of you have made customs before, please feel free to help each other out and help me answer some of these questions uh, if you know the answer to them. Also guys, please let me know if you'd like me to make more of these types of videos in the future. I will definitely try and give you as much information as possible. Um, making vinyls really isn't uh, rocket science, it's just trial, a lot of trial and error. Um, you are going to mess up. But you're going to learn from that, and you're going to move on, and your next one's going to be better than the first. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I've been meaning to make this video for a very long time. I just wanted to really make sure I got all the info in one video. So this is really just a, a little quick, quick overview of all the steps. Um, I really do hope it helps you guys out. If you guys liked this video and it was at least a little bit kind of helpful, uh, please hit the like button and let me know that it worked. <laughs> um, and if you guys do like this video, please, uh, of course, subscribe so you guys can see more cool stuff from us in the future. Thank you again for watching. Um, I think that's everything. Hutch is over here. He's doing serious art. So we're going to just let him be. He's painting a painting. He hasn't painted a painting in a billion years. So it's really exciting and it's really cool. It's a lion. Oh, sorry. It's not a lion. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope this help, helps you at least a little. And thanks for watching.